Hey guys, so I just kind of wanted to explain what you're about to watch. So this was a collaborative episode with Up The Score. So this was basically recorded for their podcast uh, with me on as the guest, but they gave me permission to re-upload it for uh, my podcast. So that's why it's called uh, on my channel, Nathan Bunnett Episode 52, but this is technically their episode. So they recorded for... Uh, like three hours or something like that but this part is just the part that I'm on because I left early in the podcast um, so in the description is going to be their full channel and they should be uploading the full episode soon and uh, I encourage you to go check them out they're really cool we had some really cool conversations on this episode as you'll see and they're really cool people um, I talk to them on Instagram all the time about basketball takes and everything like that so Again, um, the link will be in the description to all their stuff, and go check them out because this is just part of the podcast where I'm on, and then they talk um, for a while after I leave as well um, and have a, a longer episode and a longer podcast. So uh, go check them out, and I got some videos coming up that I'm sure you guys will like, and I'll have some clips of this uh, episode as well coming out here soon. But uh, with that being said, let's get into it, guys. See y'all later. Welcome back to another episode of Up the Score Show. In today's episode, we are joined by the the normal people. You know, we got Nick, we got Mike, we got Larry, and we also got an elephant in the room. Uh, introduce yourself, Nathan. Uh, what's up, guys? YouTube uh, down below. Make sure to. Yeah, I'm Nathan Bunnett. I got my my link there. Um, Nathan Butnett on YouTube, Nathan Butnett on Instagram and stuff. Um, I, I do a podcast as well, just like this. And then I also upload, uh, more in-depth videos that are, um, more scripted and edited and thought out. So I got like seven videos lined up, so I'm ready to make some bangers. I got a Harden video coming out, a Dame video coming out, um, like a Celtics video coming out and like five other ones, bro. Like I am, I'm stacked up. So go check me out. Stay tuned. Stay tuned for the guy. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shout out, shout out to Nathan. Uh, let's get this episode started. We got, we got UFC in the NBA yesterday. What y'all thought about Draymond Green and <laughs> what, what he did? Draymond uh, Green's always starting some shit, bro. I've been saying this shit for the past three years. Like, Draymond's in the wrong sport. <laughs> bro needs to just put on some gloves and sign a contract, go fight Canelo or something. <laughs> he can get his ass whooped. Let's be honest. Yeah. He get beat up so bad. Have you ever seen that video of Draymond trying to play football? He was on the Michigan State football really? team at tight end. <laughs> He's definitely in the right sport because football wasn't it. Football was not <laughs> it. But, um, nah, I feel like Draymond's always had like an issue with his temper and stuff. Like it's it's always been there. Like I feel like he's one of the players that gets ejected the most. Like it's always every season, it's always something. Um, but yeah, like <laughs> I mean, I don't really know how to really break that down more. It's that's pretty much it like he's always starting some sort of fight or something there's always something going on with him i find it to be annoying you know yeah like hey bro there's if you want to fight somebody like like you said bro, go put on some gloves like yeah basketball court i get it that he's trying to you know like pull rudy off his teammate or whatever but why go for rudy gobert like why him why not go for Jaden mcdaniels the person who Instigated the fight, but you, you're. I feel like he's he he picked, definitely picked on the wrong person. You know, I don't think Rudy went over there to you know try to fight Clay. You know, he's nah, just really. trying to break it up. Rudy tried to break that shit up, and Jeremiah was like, "No, no, fuck out of here." This is him in a grand, this is grand you know, bro. So I, many I, players I, have like side hobbies and stuff too. Like, like you have Dane with like his rap, and like some other players that have different hobbies. Like, I don't see why he doesn't just do that. Like during the off season. Like, just go into a fucking gym and hit, like, a punching bag or something if you need to get your temper out that bad. And then, like, like Rudy said, he was like, um, the Ru Rudy quote, and I'm not going to, I can't quote it directly because I don't remember exactly what it was, but he was like, uh, he just wants to play with Steph, you know, and yeah. Steph's not playing, he's trying to find anything to get ejected or something. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's just annoying, 
it, it, I just I just find it to be annoying. That's all. I feel like it it hurts the Warriors too cuz I I talked about this last year when he uh stepped on uh, Sabonis and everything and everybody will be like oh he ch-, like I see some people that defend Draymond like oh he like tripped on Sabonis like nah bro look at the replay like he straight up like curb stomped that dude but um like it just hurts the Warriors cuz now every time the Warriors win now they're going to say that they tried to do something dirty like Spurs low key have this rivalry with the Warriors because of the Kawhi stuff that happened back um, a while back. And like, if you, you uh, again, I can't quote it directly, just like you said, but Popovich had like a post game interview and he was like, um, he said something along the lines, like, Hey, at least if we win, we'll do it the right way. We, we ain't going to pull any of that shit. He said something like that, where he was, he like basically insinuated that they intentionally injured Kawhi, and that's obviously still a huge like conspiracy about whether the injury was intentional. And I feel like the more shit that happens like this with the Warriors, like the more like people are gonna like say the Warriors play dirty and try and injure players to win and everything like that. You know, like I would not be surprised if there's some sort of like like obviously I'm exaggerating and I don't want to say like these are my actual like what I think, but I would not be surprised if like a couple of years from now, there's some sort of documentary where like they have like bounty gate, but for basketball and it's with Draymond or something like that. But like, there's going to be people like making conspiracy theories and stuff like that. Like all oh, the warriors are intentionally injuring players and stuff like that with how much Draymond and other players be getting in all these fights. I could see that because in a lot of, Injuries is a part of basketball, but in a lot of the Golden State runs, there are injuries that that happen, to be honest, like in, in a lot of their runs. But one thing I want to talk about is how many games do y'all think that Draymond Green should get suspended for or should he even get a suspension? I don't think I don't. I personally don't think it's suspension worthy, but I, I, well, I'm going to say suspension worthy, but I don't think he'll get one. I haven't seen the clip yet, so I can't say. But if he I does, could, I think three to five, three to five. I could explain the clip. It was Clay Thompson and Jaden McDaniels. They were scuffling with each other. Uh, them two, they pushed each other around. Clay's jersey got ripped. Uh, Clay pushed Jaden back, and Rudy Gobert. He was trying to like, like, like divide everyone between each other. But mm-hmm. one thing that I think that's being overlooked is Draymond Green and Rudy Gobert have a long history. I, I think mm-hmm. he knows that Rudy ain't do shit. He he just he just felt like doing that. He don't like Rudy Gobert. Um, in 2017, Draymond won DPOY. 2018, he felt like he got robbed because Rudy won. He made some comments about that, and that was the same year that Rudy Gobert didn't make the All Star game, and he said, "I feel like crying." And Draymond Green at the All Star game says, "I would have cried if I ain't make it." And I remember um, when the Jordan Pool, you remember when the Jordan Pool punch happened with uh, yeah, Draymond yeah. Green. Uh, what, what Rudy, Rudy Gobert had a quote. It said, "Insecurity is always loud." And oh then, yeah, I remember that. Yeah, then when the a week before the playoffs last year, Draymond also tweeted the same thing: "Insecurity is always loud." When Rudy Gobert and Jaden McDaniels got in their little scuffle, so these two boys they they don't they don't like each other. They, they, like Draymond yeah. It's deeper than basketball. That's why I think he might should get suspended because it's a clear history that he was just out to get Rudy. Bro, yeah, he, he just don't like the man, bro. <laughs> was it was it like some, sort of a tame fight though, or or was it like hardcore? Because I I remember like the the most hardcore like fight that I've seen recently was the the Pistons one where oh, like the dude story. got knocked out. LeBron? Oh no, not that one. Who got knocked out? Oh, you talking about um? I I'm a mouse at the palace. I forget who they no, played. It was recent. It was uh, yeah, Killian Hayes. Uh, let me check. It that was a recent fight in, in the Pistons. It's and then um, it someone, was it was versus the Magic. Mad. That's right. That's um, right. Yeah, I was gonna say Magic. Magic. Yeah, because I remember I talked to my my friend in Orlando about it. That's right. Someone got hurt bad. I remember. That's what I'm saying. They they like knocked like a dude out so is it franz actually or cole uh no they didn't lo- knock out cole anthony but one oh. of them got knocked out and i remember they made a huge deal about it because 
even though the Magic players were trying to break it up, they still had to suspend the Magic players because of the rule the NBA has. So I'm sure y'all know because it was like such a historical event, but like Malice in the Palace and all that, like they made so many rules about NBA fights after that because it was so bad. And one of the rules that is stuck around says like if you walk on if you walk onto the court from the bench, you ha- automatically have to get suspended at least one game. Yeah. So because the Magic technically walked onto the court, even though they were like trying to break it up, they had to suspend all of them. Yeah, um, I I just looked up article on it. Yeah, it was Killian Hayes that threw the MMA illegal punch. Mm-hmm. Uh, Hamil Diallo he got suspended the game, so probably for hopping on the court. And a bunch of Magic players got suspended the game. It was Franz, yeah. Ademiro Schofield, Kevon Harris, Gary Harris, R.J. Hampton, Wendell Carter, Mo yeah. Bamba, Cole yeah. Anthony. Because they all came off the bench. And I remember yeah. I remember defending the coaches, too, because I, I watched the clip, and I saw that the um, the coaches got in between the, the players and stuff like that, even after, like, punches were being thrown and stuff. And I was like, that's a good coach. That's what you do as a coach. You defend your, you, you defend your players, man. Like, yeah. those players are, like, your kids, like, your boys. Like, you got to look after them almost like a parent. Like, you got to defend, defend them when shit gets real. Yeah, yeah. In college, you look at them as kids, but in the NBA, these these, these is grown men. Some of them. Yeah, I understand what you mean, though. I understand. I understand what you. Yeah, saying. but you still got like coaches are still like a lot awesome. of them are still a lot older than the yeah. players, you know. Yeah. So that's what I'm trying to say. All right, on, on to the next topic. Uh, Daniel Thais, he got uh, waived by the Pacers. He we going to the Clippers. Y'all, y'all think this make them a championship contender? The the LA Clippers? Fuck no. <laughs> No. Fuck no. Yo, why, why all right, I, I told y'all this shit was not gonna work. Didn't I say it? Did, hey, that, hey. did I not say eight it? Eight games, eight games. Uh, I told I literally bad. am making a video, like I said at the start, I'm making a video about Harden right now. The Clippers are just the Clippers are fucking themselves over so hard. This Harden trade is one of the the dumbest trades I've seen in the last couple of years. Like I ain't even gonna lie, like no, I would I would say that. Look on paper. It was a good trade on paper. Nah, yeah. dude. Like even even on paper, I think is bad. Like they gave up so many picks and so many players to the 76ers. Oh, and no. I think Harden, I think that's valid. Like, nah, for Harden, bro. <laughs> Harden is nothing. That's the point I'm trying to make, bro. That's he, crazy. He, is this crazy. is his fourth. This is his fourth team in the past four years. Who's to say he he's not gonna try and join the Lakers or another team like next year? And also, I I think it does not help the Clippers at all, bro, because it's going to be the same thing as the Nets. I'm calling it now. Like, everybody was like, oh, KD, Kyrie, Harden, it's over for the league. And people, like, tried to do the same thing now where they're like, oh, we got Westbrook, we got Harden, we got uh, uh, Kawhi, we got Paul George. Like, oh, we got, like, a super stacked team. And how many games have Paul George and Kawhi played together? It's going to be the same exact thing with the Nets where at least one of them is injured like every game and they're not going to play together. And like Harden's not in his prime anymore. Like it's just like even if Harden and Kawhi were both healthy, I think they would be like first round exit maximum. Like they are not making it that far. Harden is not as big of a piece to these to the Clippers as people are making out to be like. Harden Harden's career is borderline over at this point. That's kind of crazy. I, I, don't, I don't know if you can say that, bro. He came off a twenty and ten season. I don't know if you can say that for his over for his career. This wasn't a terrible trade. They didn't give up too much publicity. Yet. Publicity wise, like I think it's starting to like he's messing up his image too too much, bro. Like I would not want to trade for Harden like at all. Like again, this is he has gotten a new team every year in the past four years. Like I would, I would just be like, I would not want to sign him because you're just losing him the next year. You tell me an expiring contract. You want to sign an expiring contract? No, nah, I would not want to sign Harden because the max I'm getting out of him is like twenty something points a game, and then he's gonna whine and sit on the bench the rest of the season and then request a trade. Oh no, twenty points and ten assists sounds pretty good for me, bro. You you know what that means? Yeah, team? but. But at what cost, though? Like that's what I'm saying. At what cost? Only playing, have you get to the playoffs, and he has one good game in the playoffs. But yeah, that one good game, 
just happens to be like the closeout game or something. Yeah, and again, 80, 82 games a season, Harding going to play like what, 35 of them and then bitch the other 40? Harden yeah. played most of the like, games. <laughs> five games. Like, Harden, let's talk about that. He had he had a reason to leave all those teams. It was like a bullshit reason out of nowhere. He uh, didn't have a reason. I don't know about that one. He didn't have a reason to leave the Nets. The Nets. He had no reason to leave the Nets. Yes, he did. Kyrie was well, he not did, playing. He did with Kyrie. He did a little bit. I don't, I don't but think so. I think, he, I think he just pulled, like, I think he just wants to go wherever the money is, and he just makes up these reasons that, like, people can latch on to to help support. But if you take away, if you, like, take a step back and look at the big picture, like, I think he really is just, like, making up excuses to leave every single team he's on. Like, even if they are valid reasons, like, oh, Kawhi, or not Kawhi, it, uh, Kyrie, like, wasn't playing, and, you know, the the issues with Doc Rivers and the other coaches of the 76ers, like, those are valid reasons. But you take a step back, like, he's just – Again, he's leaving every team he's on, and he's just making up a reason. I don't think so, bro. I don't think it's a it's a valid reason. I don't think he's making it up. He he didn't say anything yet for the Clippers. The seventy yeah. six. So, 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 so if he leaves the Clippers this year, what are you gonna say? If he's if he's like, oh, Kawhi and Paul George are injured too much, and he tries to go somewhere else. If leave because they're losing, yes, I'll agree with you one hundred percent. But Rockets, he left because he didn't want to play the rest of his prime with Christian Wood. Then he went to the Nets. Kyrie didn't take the vaccine, so he was suspended. And that team's a top heavy team. You need all top heavy players to play. Yeah, but all again, yeah. he's all just those, go, so go ahead. All those places, all those places he had, bro. I seen this clip, bro. And this dude, he broke down James Harden at post thunder. Every other place James Harden went, he got what he asked for. He went to the he went to the Rockets, right? Exactly. He got Dwight Howard. He ended up getting CP3. He ended up getting Russell Westbrook. That didn't work. He goes to the Nets. Uh, no, he yeah, he goes to the Nets. He has Kevin Durant. He has Kyrie. That lasts all of one season. He goes to the seven. Like, bro, Kyrie, KD, and James Harden. Like, that's supposed to be a championship team. I get the injuries, he but that that's still. A, well, still Kyrie didn't I, play that one year because of the COVID. Because of yeah. the vaccine, he had the. No, no, that's he, still a, he, played, he played. He was injured for the playoffs. That's still a perfect situation, though. Oh, like, yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, I still that's think that's a perfect situation. And then that's when the point I'm making, like he goes to every he goes to every team, and every team he goes to debatably gets worse because he requests a trade, and now they have like they waste so much trying to get Harden that now when Harden leaves, they have like no stock left. Like they traded all their tradable players, they traded probably a lot of picks. Like the Nets fucked themselves. Like that's a perfect example. They tried to get Harden and now, like they, whenever they traded KD and Kyrie, they tried to get all their picks back that they traded away in the first place to get that team together because they had to blow it up again. And I just feel like Harden is demanding too much for what he is providing. He he's he's constantly asking for things to go his way, but he's never like he's never worth his pay. He's like not providing back to the team as much as he's like crying about. You know what I mean? I think he is providing. Bro. Just what what is he providing though? Like, bro, oh, did he bring the James Harden where he clutched the entire game for Celtics? Let's talk about that one. That was one, one game and that they end up one series that they end up losing. It, he, ended, not, he had a bad series the rest of the series. Not underperform? Did not did V not underperform in the playoffs? Like he always does. Harden. I think he. I, I think they're gonna do better with Maxi than they did with Harden because we're already seeing it a little bit. Because before they got Harden, I thought that their point guards were solid, and then they got Harden, and all these people's minutes were cut, and I was like, man, Harden is screwing up the whole system, and now that he's gone, the 76ers are back to their old system, and they're doing a lot better. I think that Harden really disrupted the 76ers. Like, that's just my honest opinion. Last year, Harden on the Sixers made the team better. Even with Maxi playing most of the majority of the season, season, Harden joined late in the season. He still made an impact on that team. Oh but how far did they go? How far did they go in the playoffs? Second round, but that was that was the same way for Jimmy Butler. JJ Reddick was on the team. That that one matter. Just all there. Oh, so many second round either way. I don't know, bro. I think the Clippers are gonna be like, I don't know. They're gonna be if they make it to the playoffs, they're gonna lose in the first round. Like That's they crazy. they are not as great of a team as people are saying. I I I, I saw. Um, 
ESPN or CBS, like one of the one of the news networks, they were saying like, oh yeah, this could push the Clippers to the fourth seed or something like that. I was like, I don't know about that one. I think I think they're still going to be like a sixth seed or something. If you want to oh. say they get they get knocked in the first round, okay, but on paper the team looks good. So it's not it's not a trade that's it looks bad or terrible. They didn't trade too much. I mean, got a starting caliber point guard that they wanted for a long time. This is going to be a hot take, bro, but I think P.J. Tucker going to do more for that Clippers team than Harden. Breaking, breaking. I don't know if Nick just – four minutes ago, per ESPN – well, per Woj, Draymond Green suspended five games. Draymond Green – ah, I can't talk. Draymond Green suspended five games? Yep. That's cool. That's cool. That's, that's cool. That like that's 10 minutes lot. ago. What the fuck? I said that shit like 10 minutes ago. I, I, said, I, said, I, I, said, I said, I said, I thought you said that. That's why I said, I don't know if Nick already said this. I, I, I would have been okay with two or three games, to be honest. I don't think five games. Five is fine. Five, I said three to five. Five is fine. I'm like, I think intentions matter. And the fact that, like, we know that he don't like Rudy Gobert and he just went out and did that mattered a little bit. But back to the Clippers, I, I, I agree with Larry. I agree with Larry. Um, it, it was the right move. You got to remember uh, what you said with the Brooklyn Nets when they traded Harden. They fucked up, right? They they fucked up their future because mm-hmm. they had all their picks. The Clippers are in a different position, though. They don't have any picks for real. This was the only move they could make. They are desperate. And James Harden, he is a – I'm saying this in the nicest way. He's like a narcissist. He knows when someone needs him, when someone wants him, and he is he's capable of getting what he wants. And – him going to the Clippers is a good fit. The problem isn't Harden entirely. The problem is that starting lineup I told y'all about. James Harden and Russell Westbrook is the same thing as LeBron James and Russell Westbrook. Only thing is, it's less talent. Uh, it, the, the starting lineup, once again, I'm going to say it should be James Harden, Norman Powell, Paul George, Kawhi Leonard, and Zubak. There's no reason for you to start Harden and Westbrook, who are similar type of players, they are, they are, they aren't, their way of playmaking is like, they have to get the assist. They don't get the hockey assist. Harden, Harden, it's either I'm getting the assist or I'm, or I'm shooting the ball. Like he doesn't really just, they don't make the right plays. I, I don't know how to explain it. They make the right plays. Of course, they're great playmakers, but they don't do the, the Stephen Curry playmaking aspect of off the ball. Um, Hockey assists like Draymond, they don't do that. You have two ball dominant guys who, who look for assists, and also um, Tyron Lou. I'm I'm looking at him like he's questionable. He's questionable. Um, I'm watching the lineups, and they have Kawhi Leonard at center. What the? What are you doing? Why? Why is Kawhi Leonard playing more than five minutes at center against the Dallas Mavericks? And then also they have all the they have PJ Tucker. Kawhi Leonard and Paul George, and they go ahead and put Westbrook on Luka Doncic. Like, like I understand Luka Doncic. He he's the he's the he's the Clippers killer. I I, I took his over that game. I, I'm already knowing, but like at least at least put Kawhi or Paul George on him. Like, why yeah. is Russell Westbrook guarding that guy, man? The whole yeah, point, the whole point of a Harden trade, is so Kawhi and Paul George could take more of a step on defense in a back roll on offense and have someone play me for them. When I was exactly. watching the Clippers, Harden, he is getting the ball to, to the spots I want him to get get it to Kawhi. The problem is you got Westbrook who, who's who's willing to shoot. He's capable of it, but I just think they need to rotate those two guys better. Like, mm-hmm. there's yeah, no the reason, reason they should be playing that much. The reason Kawhi has his finals MVP was because he was able – to guard LeBron in the finals with the Spurs. Like, look, Kawhi's always been, like, a defensive guy. And like you said, there's been some instances where I've seen the Clippers, like, not use Kawhi for defense. And it's like, that's, that's what you got him for was his defense. Like, him and Paul George are going to be, like, your big guys that defend the paint. Or, like, Kawhi especially, like, guarding those people like Luka and – everything like that and then you aren't doing it like why even get Kawhi if you're not gonna use him as Kawhi you know what I mean exactly exactly they got a they got a two-way they got an elite two-way player one of the best elite two-way players of all time and they ask him to be a point forward it it, it doesn't make sense he's not LeBron James he's Kawhi Leonard stop asking him to 
have the ball on top of the key and make those reads. I'm questioning Tyron Lue a lot ever since this Harden trade. Hopefully he realizes what's going on, but I got a stat I want to read. Um, the Clippers to start off the season, they were undefeated. They were undefeated before they got James Harden. Now, no. since, you sure? No, they 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 was they was not. I think they had one loss. They I think they had one loss. They had like one or two losses because I know the Lakers beat them before James Harden. Yeah, came. but aren't they like zero and six right now with Harden? I mean, yeah. so far I have not seen anything that disproves the point I was making earlier. That's all I'm gonna say while I sip my coffee. I know this is gonna be a hot take right here, but. I think if they cannot get it together before the trade deadline, blow that shit up. That's what that's what I've been saying. I'm like Kawhi or Paul George is always injured too much. Harden just gonna add more injuries on top of that. Like get some get some trades, bro. Or not trades, get some picks, bro. Like get some draft picks and just can trade everybody away at this point. Like we've been at, the Clippers fans, like all right, not to not to make y'all mad like we were talking pre-pod. I feel like the Clippers are low key turning into the the NBA version of the Cowboys, where they say this is our this is our year every year, bro. They're like, if Kawhi if Kawhi and Paul George are healthy this year, we got it, bro. And then they're never fucking healthy. Like they keep saying like this is our year every single year, and then it never is. Like just get rid of Kawhi and Paul George at this. Well, point. the thing about that is, I don't. This point? The thing about that is I don't know of any Clipper fan that actually believes that this is their year. Like Cowboy fans, bro, we're delusional. We're going to say that, bro, because we. it seems like every year we have the talent to do it. But in the Clippers, every year they have the talent to do it. They can't put it together because of injuries. But I don't think that there's an actual Clippers fan that actually believes that because if they did, they'd be I've heard it from a couple trailers. people. But, again, really? it's like they – well. I don't know if they necessarily believe that they're going to win the championship, but they at least say like, oh, we'll make it to the conference finals this year. And like, they think that they're going to make it super far. And then they always like lose like first or second round. So I just think like they've tried the Kawhi experiment for how many years at this point? It's they been like needed... four. Three yeah, since exactly. 2019. Yeah, it's been since 2019. Like, yeah, because it was, it was right after he won the championship in Toronto, yeah, right? Exactly. So yeah, yeah, four years. So they just I would just call it done and just trade them away. But that's my take. Yeah, I'm that's I'm not just saying if, if it if it doesn't work with this team, how is it ever gonna work? It's not. It's never gonna it's work. Um like it's just it's just but rather it be somebody else's problem than your problem. So that's what I'm saying. The Clippers yeah. best move is for them to get rid of them, but I don't know who could take them and actually use them. But I'm saying the the Clippers' best move is to make it somebody else's problem. I don't know who can make sure Kawhi doesn't stay injured and actually use him, but better better him than me type thing. You know what I mean? But um, I don't think Kawhi – I don't see him as the type of guy to get traded. If, if he gets moved on, it's because the Clippers traded him, which is wild. I don't mm-hmm. think Kawhi wants to leave his hometown. I think he's yeah. satisfied with his career, and he's still doing great. At this point, it's just a cherry on top if he stay healthy for an entire playoff run because when mm-hmm. Kawhi is healthy in the playoffs, he's a top three player in the playoffs. His and that game, would help his trade stock too. His game translates in the playoffs amazingly. He is an efficient two-way scorer on a, elite on both sides of the ball, and he doesn't have a turnover problem. Like in the first two games against the Suns, he was the best player in that series. The problem is it was only for two games. He, you got to remember, he's he's his own person. He's going to be like, I can stay healthy and win a ring in Los Angeles. Like, mm-hmm. he, he's satisfied with no ring, in my opinion. It's Paul George who might look at this and be like, do I do I fit with Kawhi? Like, they always got me running out of position because ever since Paul George and Kawhi Leonard been a parent, mm-hmm. I always compared them to – Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum. They, they, they're two pure small forwards, and one of them, if anything, Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum are more versatile, in my opinion, like position-wise. Yeah, yeah, 100%. And, and, like, you got two of the most pure small forwards on the same team. It, it, it's, it's an awkward fit. And the, the James Harden trade, that's why I like it. They got exactly what they needed, playmaking. Um, But the stat I wanted to read is, before the Harden trade, 
They were fifth in offensive rating, fourth in defensive rating, third in net rating. And they were one of the best teams. Y'all are right. They had three wins, two losses, but they were playing really good. And now, after the Harden trade, they're 25th in offensive rating, 28th in defensive rating, 27th in net rating. They've been one of the worst teams. They're losing to the Grizzlies, which is wild. Losing to the Grizzlies, <laughs> losing to the yeah. Grizzlies is wild. And, and no one else is as unlucky as Paul George. He, y- y'all saw the three pointer he shot and it got wedged. <laughs> I didn't no, know. I haven't seen I it, but I can that. imagine it. Bro, Paul George is so unlucky. He shot a three in the clutch, and it, it was a way three-pointer. But, man, Paul George is unfortunate. But, I, y'all, y'all, it's too it's too early to judge the Clippers. The same way it's too early to judge the Bucks, in my opinion, right now. Mm-hmm. I oh, got as a crazy... Bucks fan, I have not been watching as much Bucks as y'all would think I have. I, yeah, me I too. I haven't been catching up on the books, like so. I'm kind of out of. I've been the keeping right up now. with the stats though, and like it's. I I saw that like y'all y'all put in the bullet points like, is it panic time for the Bucks? Because like the Dame Dame hasn't been performing that well. I think it's just a matter of getting accustomed to the team. I do yeah. have a crazy question though, and if if we don't have time for it, we can just skip over the question and go into the next. We thing. got time. We got. But time. you got you you have me thinking, if because you said. Kawhi would not request a trade because he likes LA too much. If the Clippers decided to trade him though, and Kawhi didn't want to go, where do you think LA would send him? Because the only reason Kawhi went to Toronto was because was there was some Pop. beef there, and Pop was basically like, "Fuck you! You want to go to sunny LA? I'm gonna send you to the opposite, to fucking snowy Toronto." So if there was some sort of like, "I'm not gonna send you where you want to go," where do you think LA would? would send him i don't think it'd be a, i'm not gonna send you where you want to go i think it would just be a we're moving on from you before it's too late type of thing yeah and the, the teams that would be interested in Kawhi, i, I don't think they want to send him to the west the, the teams in the east to start off that would be interested is the 76ers mm-hmm. i said the heat yeah the yeah heat. the heat maybe the cavaliers if they bro, if the Cavaliers picked him up, honestly, I think that that would be a perfect fit for them. That would be they, a problem. No, that would not be perfect. That would be a problem if the Cavaliers got know. him. I don't know about that one. I think they would be pretty good. They have fucking Jared Allen, Evan Mobley, and Kawhi. That's what I mean by problem. You're gonna get. You're gonna get through all three of them. Like, there's no way they have an elite defense. No, he, that's what he means. I, I feel him. That's what he means. Like it would be a problem for the league, not for the yeah, not for the Cavs. Oh, oh, great oh, thing oh. for the yeah, Cavs. yeah. That's for what I'm saying. I thought, I thought you, were, I thought I thought you, thought you said you a problem for, would be a problem for the Cavs, and I was like, how? <laughs> no, that's a problem for the league, my boy. And another team is the New York Knicks. I think they're waiting for like a S a A tier star They've player. They've been to waiting me. for a superstar for so long, bro. Yeah. They they wanted Zion, and then they wanted KD. <laughs> they, bro, the Knicks fans are struggling right now. They're, like, I they would say are, they're, they're, they're due. We got Jalen Brunson now, who's all right, but they were struggling for a while. They, like, they're dude. definitely due for for a superstar, though. Yeah. Did y'all Literally. see? Did y'all see that meme that, like that came out after the Zion trade? Or and after or Zion draft, I mean, and then after the Kawhi um signing. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. somebody I made a I, I don't want to joke about like mental health stuff because like I have a lot of friends that have mental health issues, but somebody made a meme about the stats that after the Pelicans won the draft lottery and after KD got traded to Brooklyn were some of the highest uh mental health hotline calls for New York. <laughs> Oh my god! I bet it like, was, bro. It pro- <laughs> bro, like it probably would have been, because bro, the like you said, bro, the Knicks, they've been attached to every superstar that's been available. Kevin Durant, Kyrie, Zion. Who do they have? Julius Randle and Jalen Brunson. <laughs> so, <laughs> so you know, if you wanna, if you wanna know how the Knicks fans feel r- r- right now, just look at Stephen A. Smith. He's borderline crying in some of those interviews, bro. <laughs> As he should be, bro, because just I couldn't even imagine being a Knicks fan. You know, you're like, oh, dude, they have so much hype around them that they're going to get this guy and this guy, and they end up with no one. So, you know, I, yeah. I feel them. I feel them. Yeah. Uh, Y'all can another... keep talking. I'm going to take 30 seconds to go to the bathroom real quick. I've been yeah. drinking this big-ass fucking water, so. 
Another point for Kawhi would yeah, be the Grizzlies. Y'all, y'all talk. I got a good, good one too. And then he just reminded me. Appreciate yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, hey, Larry, though. Look, we gonna we gonna talk these trades, man, because these boys chatting. <clears throat> what about Kawhi to the Grizzlies? That that'll kind of be tough. Kawhi. You don't have the money. Who you who you giving up in that trade? It's twenty five million dollars you have to come up with. You're so right. No, you're actually right. Dude. Yeah, yeah, they pay JJJ, they pay Desmond Bain, and they pay John Morant. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, you need Luke, Stephen, and Brandon Clark. Two of these players not playing the rest of the season. Yeah. So I don't know how that's gonna work. No, nah, y'all right. Yeah, right. you need, and then you need multiple first round draft. I would say probably like two for two to. Three. Oh, no, no, Memphis has picks. Hey, Memphis, has picks. Memphis has picks. Yeah, Outside right. of Ja I'm and Jared Jackson, no one touches 30, 30 grand. I mean, 38 on mil. Yeah, I, yeah. I heard something about Kawhi to the Grizzlies. It's not going to happen. I do not think that Kawhi to the Grizzlies would work, to be completely honest. I'm not that thing to work. I think it would work. What? What the Grizzlies need right now is offense. Like, we were just talking earlier about Kawhi. Kawhi. Being- yeah, but we were talking about how Kawhi's biggest asset is his defense. Like, Grizzlies, they don't need more defense. They need more offense because they don't have Morant right now. They need to start outscoring people. Like, they, but, need to, they need to put some points on the board, which is what they're struggling with right now. Kawhi is still know. a top 20 offensive player in the league. Yeah, and I agree, but I don't know if it's going to be enough still. No, it's enough. It's enough. What's not enough is the fact that he doesn't have a point guard. In my opinion, or for yeah, the past the recent thing. years, he hasn't had a point guard. Now he has two of them. With Morant gone, they they just need an, another guard. Like they need a a better backup. Like no, they can't they can't guard. do that. Yeah, wait for John to get back because once John gets back, then that's gonna be all fucked up. You might as well just wait to ten more games. Yeah. What about what about a a decent shooting guard then? Plays the yeah, one. Veins going off. Veins in my P right now, bro. Not gonna lie, Veins. Maxi. No, I'm not, no, he's in the conversation now. I'm not saying, I'm not saying no, he's Max is definitely MIP. Max yeah, is I, I don't stop saying, but this has been improving. Like he's, he's done a lot this year. Yeah. He's, in, yeah. he's in that race. Mm-hmm. But haven't we seen this with Desmond Bain every time that John Morant's out? Yes. Every time yeah. that when John Morant's like hurt or something, like Desmond Bain does the same exact thing. <laughs> yeah, but now he has now he has time to actually prove it. Now he has actually games that they can prove it and not just be mm-hmm. uh Wherever Jaws gone, yeah, but, but, but Bane, when it comes into the clutch situations, Bane is not there, bro. He's not a superstar, so I don't really expect that too much from him. That's not who I want the ball to be in the hands of at the end of the game. Right. Well, they mm-hmm. signed, they, they they extended him for a lot of money for him to yeah. be having the ball in his hands. Well, you'll, you'll take him anyway, someone else will. I think yeah. my roommate just got home, so give me a second. I'm gonna let him know I'm recording so that there isn't a bunch of noise. All right, sounds good, man. Um, let, let's uh, Mike, you here? Yes. All right, yeah, let, let's move on right. to the Bucks now. It, wait, so are y'all mm-hmm. panicking on the Clippers right now? Yes, you definitely hit the panic button on the Clippers. Yes, yes, because you do, because yeah. you bring, because you do all this, you bring in James Harden. You know, you're not bad before, so you think when you bring in James Harden, you know, you you skyrocket up the rankings. You think. This is a this is the move to actually put us at the top. We've been at the top for a minute. We've been at the top of discussion, not actually at the top, but now we're really at the top with this James Harden move, and it's not working at all. So yes, I believe you definitely start to panic right now. Larry, you panicking? Which team are we talking about? Panic mode. The, the, the Clippers. Y'all hitting the panic mode? Oh yeah, I no, I already no, went no. on a whole rant about that. Like I don't need to repeat myself. No. <laughs> I'm, I'm not even. Just wait. We another Tyloo said 15 games, bro. Y'all didn't give him 15 games. Can y'all give Tyloo the best coach, one of the best coaches in the league, 15 games at least. That's it. All I'm saying, bro, is like I said, if if Harden requests another trade after this year, I'm gonna be blowing up your phone like bitch. I fucking told you. Like, I'm playing, but like <laughs> I'm gonna be I'm gonna be talking my shit if Harden requests another trade after this year. That's all I'm gonna say. Nick, I mean, if it's losing, yeah, sure. Because you, you don't even gotta ask me, bro, because I told you this shit was gonna happen once they traded for the Harden. So I mean, yeah, all right, I was right all about right. that, right? And then we're gonna talk about the Grizzlies next, right? And who was the one that said, "Oh, it, 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 they'll be fine. They'll be fine." No, they not. Yeah, no, they're not. 
Grizzlies Remember y'all said Carolina. that, oh, they're going to be fine without John Moran. Oh, they'll be fine. They'll get a few wins. No, no, no. I said that. Though. Eli said like... that. Eli said that. I said they're going to lose. He said they're going to be fine. getting too. dunked on metaphorically and literally. <laughs> they're crazy, bro. I thought they'd be like, yeah. too. Eli said they'll be 12 and 13. predict these things, said. bro. Come on, bro. <laughs> Said they'll be twelve and thirteen. That's what Eli said. Max, man. God, I mean, but we God. haven't even hit. We haven't even hit ten games. I don't think so. I mean, twenty. We, yeah, we haven't even hit ten. So I think we'll think they'll give them some time, bro. They just beat the Clippers. So who the, the Grizzlies? Yeah, yeah, but that's the Clippers, bro. We're worried about the Clippers. Oh, too. so yeah, now it's another team we hit the penny button on. Though. You just hit the penny so, on the Clippers. So, so now it's just, but they're just the Clippers now. Like now they're just the Clippers. It's not. Yeah. Like, oh, that's just, they're just the Rockets. <laughs> They're just the hey, they're just the magic. Better. They're just the pistons, bro. You you can't put them in that category. And the rock, what did I tell y'all, bro? I bro, I fucking told y'all my hot take at two of them. Jalen Green, MIP, Emo, Eme Coach of the Year. Eme Coach of the Year looking I'm real biased, crazy. Right I now. can't talk about the Rockets. As a Spurs fan, I know I have a Rockets pennant like right here. So it sounds a little weird, but as a Spurs fan, like I got a dog on the Rockets anytime I can, just because of that Texas rivalry. But Larry's I only a have Rockets that... fan, so watch who you're I, talking on, pal. I only have this Rockets pennant because I, really I, I, I start. Our, yeah. I went to college in Houston for one year, and I hated it. That's actually how my podcast started, bro. So I, I became really good buddies with this guy at my college, and he was a Houston fan, and obviously I was a Spurs fan. So we started the podcast that started like this interesting dynamic where we were, it's like, all right, we got two like huge NBA nerds. One's a Houston fan. One's a Spurs fan. You got that already built in like podcast chemistry about, you know, uh, the rivalry and stuff like that. But he he ended up getting too busy for the podcast. So I rebranded it to just myself. So and he was cool. The Rockets are the Rockets are fourth in the West and on a six game winning streak. If they can keep this up, bro, my email, my takes are looking real, real, real nice. So, Jalen Green is Houston. good when, he, when he's like on an yeah. NBA team, not a AAU not team. An AAU team, yes, mm-hmm. bro. I said, I've said this for years. The Rockets are a professional AAU team, bro. That's what they are. They're professional. They were professional AAU team. Now they're looking. Have like you seen Larry Bird AAU versus AAU KD? Team. Have you seen that YouTube video? No, I have not. That shit always cracks me up. So they did, uh, I forget who it is. It's like House of Highlights. Like one of their series is like they get old players to to play new players like in a simulation. And they got Larry Bird versus KD. And Larry Bird reads the Brooklyn Nets on KD's jersey. And he's like, Brooklyn, I'll whoop an AAU team any fucking day. <laughs> yeah. Because he doesn't oh, think shit. that Brooklyn's like a thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. I get it. I get it. But no, nah, bro, like, bro. Takes looking real nice right now. Just saying, they can keep this. Yeah. Up. Well, what's your take on the Grizzlies? You hitting the pennant button on them? <laughs> Wait till Jaw comes back. Y'all, y'all, y'all being patient with the Grizzlies while they don't have Jaw for twenty five games, but panicking yes. on the Clippers in five games is wild. Pan- no, listen, listen. There is a major difference between the two. I'm panicking on the Clippers because of what I said earlier. The Clippers, they've they've been. In on paper, contenders for the past four years. They've been contenders for the past four years, bro. And they 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 make a move, and it seems like the right move. But in all actuality, this shit is one of the worst. The Grizzlies, on the other hand, we know what they are. They are trying. They're still trying to get acclimated without with not having their number one guy. So once they get it figured out, and not having John Morant, then once they get John Moran back, the, the the sky is the ceiling. I think so. I think this all depends on the 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 sub question that's underlying the that question though. It really depends on do you like you're saying like oh don't worry about it because John Morant's gonna be back here soon. But there's yeah. the other question on top of it of do you think John Morant's actually learned his lesson and is gonna like not get suspended again? Or do you think he's gonna try some fuck shit again, and then they're just gonna be in the same issue? No, I don't. I honestly, I, me personally, I'm a second chance type of person. I, I give second chances. I give third chances. I give four or five. You know, but 
I heard, I know a saying. Sim? When somebody shows you, did you say sim? Okay. <laughs> okay, Mr. Train Fetish. We don't want to talk oh, about that. Right. Okay. Okay, guy. Wait till Elijah comes back. Wait till, wait till Spiral Sports comes back. But like Fetish I was saying, bro, he, um, like, I heard, I know a saying, bro, believe when somebody shows you who they are, believe them. But I don't think this is who John Moran is. I think, I just think that with, you know, they signed Derrick Rose. Derrick Rose and John Morant, when Derrick Rose was in his prime, you know, they're the same player, uh, almost are identical. So I think that with the, I think that this is the reason they brought in Derrick Rose to begin with, you know, as a to be a mentor to John Morant. No disrespect to his dad, but John Morant's dad is not doing a good enough job, obviously. So mm -hmm. they bring in an NBA vet, somebody who who has the same athletic, who had the same athletic shit as John Morant, you know, John Morant, uh, Derrick Rose 2.0. That's who John Morant is. Let's just hope the fucking ACLs, you know, let's hope they don't have the same. All right, all right, yeah, all right. I can agree with all that, yeah. I, I, but I yeah, bro, like, that. I don't think that this is who uh, John Morant is. I think he has learned his lesson because 25 games is a lot and he's missing out on hella money. Like, we're talking like 60, 70 million. So because of the because the incentives in this contract, you don't make an all NBA team, you lose this much, blah blah blah. blah. Yeah. It's like, it all adds up to like a hell of money. So I think that he does learn his lesson after this. Um yeah, so they'll be, bro, trust me, the Grizzlies will be fine. Not as fine as he said they will be last year. Uh we we're fine in the West. We we all see how that played we're out. We're fine in the West. They're yeah. gonna be they're gonna be good. They're gonna be straight, bro. They with but with this twenty, the, don't get me wrong. Twenty five games is a lot. That's like, mm -hmm. that's a, that's a third of the season. Make it so, like, make it like thirty five, because then John Morant's got to get acclimated to the play play of the game again. So yeah, so bro, they they I give them they might end the season five hundred. If they miss the playoffs, it's because the West is stacked, thing. and they uh and the West is just gonna be too stacked this year. So give them some time. To get acclimated without playing with to playing without him, and then once he comes back, it shouldn't take more than three games for him to get back in the mode that he was in last year. Yeah, I still think they're they're still like, uh, and I I I don't know your name, the person in the middle. I'm sorry. Um, Talking about hoodie guy. Uh, yeah, he's he's in the middle on on my uh, screen. That's right, Nick. I'm, That's I'm Nick. 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 Um. Yeah, like you were saying, man, like it once you're I feel like after all those games, like twenty five games, no John Morant, like I think your season's just pretty much done as a team. Like forty games, forty ish games, um, is not enough games for you to make this like mega comeback <laughs> in the conference. Like I what are they right now? Let me check. They're, They're like two and two. nine. I just looked at yeah. it. They're two and nine. No, I mean like what position? Like they're last, not, they're last, yeah, two and yeah. Nine. So if they're last right now, say say they get like a couple more wins and they move up. Say they like say they're like the thirteenth seed or something in a couple. If games. they're capable of that, I mean, that's yeah, what I'm say, saying. Yeah, yeah. But I'm giving them the benefit of the doubt yeah, just yeah, to make yeah. my point. Let's say they make it to the thirteenth seed. Forty games is not enough for them to make it all the way back to the eighth seed, bro. Like they're still, no, no, I, it's not. they're still it's gonna not. be like the ninth seed by the end of this. Like there's no coming back from from that 25 game suspension like you know. the season's pretty much over like there's no 40 games is not enough time to get enough traction to like bounce your way all the way back up to, to in standings i don't think they're gonna go all the way back up but they'll hit the they'll they might be the 10th seed like I that's what i'm saying might, they're like, they'll, 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 make the they'll make the yeah. play in they'll make the play in but they're not gonna be playoffs but then again they might not even make the play in because <laughs> if they don't you know if they don't get it together without job real soon you yeah know, and that's why and, we're talking about the panic button. Like they, their season. But that's why. Over. But that's that's why I'm not hitting it. That's why I'm not hitting it just yet. Like if they lose, if they go like five and twenty when Jaws back, then that's when I hit the panic button. But if they can go on like a little run, like a three four game win streak here, you know, one two game a two game win streak or whatever, you know, they'll put them at like they'll put them like sixteen and ten or not. No, 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 no. Maybe like 10 and 15. 
10 and 15, I think you can come back from 10 and 15. They're two and nine right now. Yeah, bro. That's why I said yeah, if they can go on the win. That's why I said if they can go on the win streak. That's like an apple, bro. They're not going to win. That's what I'm it. saying. Like, there's you don't know like, that though. It don't matter. Like, I do know it. I actually do. Minimum. You don't know You don't. You don't know that. I don't think that. Wait. So hold on. Hear me out. I haven't had a really. I haven't had a horrid take all NBA season. So I think I'm hot. So Mike, Mike, don't mess up your good record. Not bad. No, That's Mike, probably, yeah. good. What's Mike, one L though? What's Even one? What's one L? Play in, bro, one they're L not going to win in the playoffs because y'all has been out too much. No, I don't think this this one L won't affect my legacy. Uh, this, this one L won't affect. All right, ready, ready. One, two, three, four, five. This is their next six games: Spurs, Celtics, Rockets, Suns, Timberwolves, and then Utah. They're gonna maybe. win against the Rockets. They're only one, winning two. That's it. They're only that's winning maybe two. One game. They're only winning two. Only winning two. Wins in that. Yeah. They're only winning two. They're winning the. They're winning the Spurs game and they're winning the Jazz game. And then look. That's, that's and then look. Fan after fan that, they play. They play Dallas. The they play Dallas again. Then they play the Suns. Then they play Dallas again. They play Houston twice. Then OKC, New Orleans. Yeah, your the schedule they have that's is a, not helping your oh, case. It's bro. not. It's not. That's such a tough stretch of game. They did that bro. on purpose too because they know Jaw was in. Yeah, the for, sure, the for sure, for sure, for sure. That's a that's such a tough stretch. And then, and then once Jaw comes back, at the schedule this gets even worse, bro. They got played. That's what I'm saying. Like when the schedule, bro, they got to play that good too. teams in a row, bro. That, that's not good. It's not. But you know, bro, it's the NBA. Anybody, literally anybody, can lose on any night. So yeah, true. But yeah, yeah I would not be surprised if it was like Jaw comes back and the NBA is like, all right, now you got to play the Bucks five games in a row. Get fucked. <laughs> yeah, right, so right. are we all hitting the panic button? No, I'm, I'm not definitely hitting the panic button. Oh, no, 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 no. What do you mean, panic button? Trade everybody? No, no up, panic. Like, like their no, no, season's just, done. Like you're season out on their done. season. You're out on their season. I mean, I call it because, first of all, two of, their, two of their key rotational players are injured for the rest of the season. And they have their pick this year. They can end up getting a top three pick at that ten team with healthy Steven Adams and Brandon Clark. That could actually uh, that, yeah. that could be a really good we team. We were talking pre pod about how good Steven Adams is. We're, we're talking about this season though, Byron. Yeah, 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 I'm saying yeah, though. They, we're talking about this season. Look, this, 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 this could be, this could be the Warriors getting James Wiseman. This, this, this is what it could be. Yeah, it's not like he's fancy. Like, he, yeah, he's an independent, but he's already thinking about next season for them. <laughs> yeah. He the better button, bro. All right, what was the next panic button or next next thing you got? Oh, uh, the next the next team was the Milwaukee Bucks. You know, Mike. I think they're fine. I think they're fine. Mike, what you think? I like, I like, I like, I like the team. I never liked it. I'm not hitting the panic button on the Bucks as a whole because we're six and four. That's not terrible. Uh, we are we're six in the west. I mean, six in the east. Damn, the Heat went on a crazy run. We're six mm-hmm. in the east, bro. You know, I'm not hitting the panic button on the team. I'm hitting it on the player. I'm hitting the panic button on Damian Lillard right now. I I, I don't know about that one, bro. Today, today, as of today, bro, this is probably his second best game he's had. He's he has 24 points, five and nine from the field, 24 from two or four. From Giannis three. is out. So eight yesterday, assists. uh the thirteenth, eight assists. Yesterday, three of seventeen. Um let, let's look at let, let me look at his game. I mean I mean he had thirty four points before that, 21, 30, 15, 25. I, yeah, I think I get that. But when his bad but when he has bad games, bad he has bad games. Like his bad yeah. games are terrible games. Like the the the, uh, the Bulls, twelve points, three for seven, one for nine. The uh, Hawks six points, two for twelve. Like, if he if so, he, and that's then, that's he, the. Or go ahead. He bro. has to. He has to get on the roll. Like, this is not when we got Damian Lillard this offseason, bro. This is not the Dame that I expected. I expected the Damian Lillard that dropped thirty two a game last season. This this is not it. When he had he has. Like he's one of those players that have in betweens, you know. Like you know, they say mm-hmm. either you're terrible or you're elite. There's no in between. Dame, that's Middleton. He has he has the he has the he has the in betweens. He has he has the great games like the 39 point game he had uh, uh opening day. He has two terrible games, and the rest of his games are like middle of the pack. So yeah. we need a consistent Dame, bro. Either you're gonna be ass, which we don't want, or you're gonna be the Damian Lillard that we traded for. Which is the dame that's going on right now? Which is the dame that we that we had game one versus 76ers. 
All right. Like, that's yeah. he's, I'm hitting the panic button on him because we have to get consistent. Like we can't have we cannot we can't expect to be this top seed, be the be the number one seed, be the best team mm-hmm. in the NBA like people projected and you're so up and down because we brought you in to be that oh, to my, be the one A one B. Yeah. My cousin. I I'll I'll add to that and I'll say like I agree with you. Like if he c- continues to be inconsistent, then yes, because that is for the past three years what I've said the Bucks' biggest issue is is inconsistency, and that came from pretty much every player besides Giannis on the roster. I said that before. I, I said before if I had the choice, I would have traded Middleton before I traded Drew Holiday. The problem is you can't trade Middleton because Giannis likes him too much, but. Yeah. I Middleton has that same inconsistency problem, you know, like there's so many memes that have been made about the cycle where it's like plays like Michael Jordan is trash, gets talked about being trash, becomes Michael Jordan, uh, becomes like and then after he plays as Michael Jordan, people hype him up and then he plays trash again, you know, and it just creates that cycle. So if Dame continues to be inconsistent, then, yeah, you just have the same issue as you do with Middleton. But I think. If we give it a bit more time, I think he'll be fine. Um, again, I think that is just the the biggest issue is the Bucks have always had that issue with inconsistency, and we need to get players that are more consistent and can like provide every single like night. Um, yeah. But I will say, look at what Dame has been been doing. Like I think we he's doing what we drafted or not, I was about to say drafted what we traded him for. Um, which is he's closing out games when he's doing well. Like Damian Lillard's whole thing is is being clutch and like performing in the last final moments. And that's something else that I've talked about with the Bucks is I feel like the Bucks they they get these huge leads in the first three quarters, and then they end up blowing like a lot of their leads in the fourth quarter or in the playoffs as well. Like they'll get to a game seven. And then by the time it hits game seven, they just give up. And, like, they, they, they're, they like, jogging up and down the court, like, not really trying. And that, like, I feel like Dame will help with that, Will where Dame will actually, like, help close out these games and, like, help the team actually be like, hey, let's play to the end. You know, there's four quarters here. Um, when, um, again, the Bucks have, have had an issue with that, especially with Mike Budenhoser. Um, like the last couple of years where they just like they'll get to fourth quarter six minutes in and then the last six minutes of the game like they aren't doing anything and they'll have like a 20 point lead and all of a sudden it's a five point lead and then all of a sudden they're losing and they lost the game like they just they uh they lose all their steam and their momentum in the in the last couple of minutes of the game always so yeah that's what man who are you selling who are you telling? Last last season, bro, me and Mar watched almost every game. A Heat Bucks, bro. We be up fourth quarter. What the fuck happened to the lead? Is is yeah? <laughs> it, it, it's annoying. It was a very annoying to watch. But like you said, bro, Coach Bud, he's out of here. Adrian yeah. Griffin, I don't think he's doing that bad of a job. You know, as a for being mm-hmm. a first time head coach, I don't think he's doing that bad of a job. Yeah, we'll see what happens. All right. I'm going to get my takes off on the books. Um, Panic on Chris Middleton and Adrian Griffin. Adrian Griffin, he's been an absolute embarrassment, in my opinion. Um, Embarrassment? Yes, an embarrassment. The reason... Strong. The the reason... I'm not panicking on the books, though. I'm panicking on Middleton and Adrian Griffin. Adrian Griffin, he came to the books, and he changed their defensive scheme. Uh... They were a drop coverage scheme, and they were only that. That 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 was Loki. Their problem with Budenholzer is that they wouldn't want to adjust in the fourth quarter. They do a lot of drop coverage, and teams would know what they're doing. So when you're in a close game and you know what the other team is doing, you take advantage of that. Adrian Griffin, though, he he's just doing stuff on defense. He's switching it to like a a man man defense. The players don't like it. But one thing I'll say is that he changed it back to the drop coverage. The players were complaining about it but that's not even my biggest problem with him my biggest problem with him has been 
He's the reason Damian Lillard and Giannis haven't been working. I got a couple stats. This is a pick and roll man frequency. So this is the amount pick and roll, roll man frequency, I should say. So whenever, this is who's setting the picks. Alperen Sengun, he's leading the league in screen set at 39%. So 39% of the times when Sengun is in the game, he is setting picks. Um, And you see Giannis all the way at number 44. There are 43 other people in the NBA setting more screens than Giannis Antetokounmpo. And that is a problem. Yes, that is a yeah. major problem because we know that Giannis is a PNR guy. Like, yeah, that's where he that's where he thrives the best, and that that's an issue. It is an issue because it look, needs to be fixed really fast. When when we when we seen the Bucks trade, we imagined it like Giannis and Dame pick and roll. That's crazy. Yeah, we did. Giannis, they aren't even doing that. And then my other problem is this. Pick and roll ball handler frequency. Dame is fourth in the league in pick and rolls. He is getting pick and rolls. It's just they're not doing it with Giannis. Like, what, like what are we doing? We got Brooke Lopez slow behind Bobby Portis. He's cool. Like those are the guys setting Damian Lillard picks. And look, we we keep up with Trey Young. We know Trey Young. All he calls for is screens, and, and Damian Lillard gets more screens set for him. And the last one is pick and roll ball handler points per possession so this is how much points per possession after each one of these pick and rolls Damian Lillard scores and he's 26 in the league and I feel like a big part of that is because he's not doing these pick and rolls with Giannis he's not doing the pick and rolls with his best player uh yeah I I have a problem with Adrian Griffin with that that is such when you're doing the simple things wrong that's a red flag you're not doing pick and rolls with Damian Giannis what are we doing then Mm mm-hmm like that that makes no sense. He's changing uh last year. They were a top two defensive team of and they were at a they're at a point last year where they were one of the best defenses of all time because of how they were playing. And he's like, I understand Drew Holiday and Dame. It, that is a dramatic difference. But it's the same thing, like I said with Kawhi earlier. You got Dame, so Giannis could take more of the load on defense. And what do you do? You ask Giannis to do the same things as he does on offense. You're not mm-hmm. changing. You're not adjusting. You did this so Giannis could adjust, be more of the defensive anchor that he is alongside Brooke. And what do you do? You you, you don't do that. Like that doesn't make yeah. sense. To me. That's the other make- reason I. That's the other reason I said like I if I had the choice I wouldn't have traded Drew Holiday over Middleton because I I have always commended Drew Holiday's defense. And I feel like that goes unrecognized a lot. Like everybody's just like, oh yeah, Drew Holiday, like he can shoot threes. That's pretty good. But like low key, Drew Holiday won a lot of games for the Bucks because of defense. Did, like yes. just, just look at the finals versus the Suns. That's all you need to look at. Like, bro, that that steal from Holiday, like to Giannis, will always be iconic. Like Drew Holiday's defense added a lot to the Bucks that I think people don't talk about enough. I think with the trade though, the the idea was Giannis could replenish that value that they were getting from Drew on defense just by having more responsibility. Mm-hmm. And Giannis's responsibilities that he was holding on offense and Drew's responsibilities he was holding on offense now go on Damian Lillard's shoulders, which in my opinion was a good process. That's a good thought process to me. It's just that they're not uh-huh. doing the right plays. I but Giannis isn't gonna get steals like like Drew Holiday is because he's a power or because he's a power forward. Like Giannis can get blocks and everything, obviously, but I still want I still want that small guy like that guard that's gonna like grab the ball out of people's hands like that and stuff. I I still want like a a defensive guard that like can get low and and get steals rather than just leaving it up to Giannis and Lopez to get blocks everywhere. The thing is, though, I think uh, Giannis and Lopez are capable of leading your team to a top 10 defense. Drew Holiday is what made it, like, the best defense. He was, like, the, the thing that made it special, of course. Mm-hmm. But but they're willing to lose a little bit on defense to gain a lot on offense, and they're, they're, they're not doing that. They're just – they're using yeah. Damian – Ah, it's weird. It's weird. Uh, I don't know. I've always been a def like personally, and I know this is sort of like an old head take, or but I've always been a defense over offense guy, and I know that that's not the position that the league as a whole 
is on. Like everybody just wants to score more, like get more offense, score more points. Cause I mean, that's what wins you the games is if you have 130 to 129, you win, you know, but yeah. I've always been that guy that's, and maybe it's because I'm a Spurs fan and that's how we won a lot of our championships, but I've always been raised in the world of sports that defense is what's going to win you games and I've always just been a defense over offense guy. So any anytime I see a team lose defense, whether it be Drew Holiday or some other team losing uh, their defense, it always makes me like die a little inside and cringe a little. Like even if they're getting a huge, um, like amazing player back, like Damian Lillard, it always like hurts me a little bit when teams give up defense because it's like I'd I'd rather keep like as much defense as I can. You you kind of like me, uh, and I the, the offense wins games, defense wins championships type thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm kind of the same way too. But anything, let's move on to the other. Wait, y'all panicking on the Bucks? Uh, no, nah, I'm not. Uh, I don't like how nah. the team's old. I want to I want to see how inconsistent Dame is the next like ten to fifteen games. That's my thing. All right, what we'll, we'll you say? Well. Yeah, being the younger pieces is the old team. So everyone's Destined to decline at some point. Chris Middleton. Now with Chris and Brooke. I know Jay Crowder's not him anymore. Jay Crowder got hurt. Jay Crowder was doing nice. He was. But that's always been my thing, though. Why? Bro, even after we lost to the Heat, bro, I was like, get rid of Chris Middleton. Get rid of Chris Middleton. Do not re-sign Chris Middleton. You were saying that. Giannis likes him too much, man. I don't, bro. As a GM, I don't give a fuck who you like. Nigga, he's he costing us he, games. He can't yeah, but Gian, Giannis almost didn't resign until they was, got man. named because Giannis, like, Giannis is almost ready to leave Milwaukee. Like, and you know if what? They, if if he, they traded Middleton, like, Giannis, like, low key might have left. I, I don't think so. Him. I don't think so. I, I think, I don't, I don't think he, he they he almost didn't resign. Much. They almost didn't resign before the, the championship. Damien, or not Damien, like, uh, Giannis almost left. Uh, Milwaukee before 2021, and then they got Drew Holiday, and then they won the championship. Like Giannis, only re- like he waits to resign to see what the front office will do. If they re if they sign somebody like Drew Holiday or Damian Lillard, then Giannis sticks around. But if Gian- if they do something Giannis doesn't like, I could easily see Giannis like trying to look somewhere else. Like if they traded Middleton, it would definitely be like an issue. Like not, I wouldn't say it's as big as Giannis leaves. Like, I want to go that far, but it definitely would push Giannis closer to that point, like closer to the line. I disagree. I, I think Giannis, his outlook of it isn't necessarily who they're getting back, but the direction. Because when they traded for Dame, I don't think it's necessarily like, yes, we got Drew out of here and Dame is Dallas here. I think it's more of a, oh, they are willing to give up the future draft picks and trade assets for me. I should I should stay here. I should sign a contract. If Chris Middleton was to get traded and he sees it's your your team is better, it's for the better of the team, he'll be like, okay, I understand. This is for the better of the team. I don't think he really he, he loves Chris, but I think he's he said that he's willing to do anything for a championship. And if he's willing to do anything, yeah, Chris gotta go, man. <laughs> I don't know, man. It I, I think I, I see where you're coming from. It's it's just what does Giannis like more? Does he like the direction or does he like Chris? Because every every interview or everything I've seen with Giannis, yeah, like Giannis loves Chris Middleton. Like Giannis is – Chris is to Giannis what, like, Tony Parker Dame was. Dame was to CJ. Like, like, he just – he can't let Middleton go, bro. Like, he was saying that – um Back when they were playing in the finals and like for their championships, like he was saying, like Middleton is like the second place best player on the team and like all that, and like they're a package deal and like all that stuff. Like then again, that is when that is when they were were winning championships and when they were winning. But I don't know, dude. I feel like they have too close of like a connection that like if you sever it, there's gonna be some turmoil that comes out of it. I think their connection is so close. That Giannis got Chris Middleton a contract that he didn't deserve, and Chris Middleton should be happy with that. I think Giannis has done enough for Chris. He got him paid. Chris 
give me some assets, bro. Like, <laughs> like you, you play, you play like this, man. It's time for you to repay your debt by leaving. It's <laughs> <laughs> about that time, man. I, I, I got to head out here in a few. So, do we want to do? Oh, uh, let's would do the, Yeah, yeah. Let's do all the right. training. Would you rather? Um. All right. Nathan, I got a would you rather for you. This is the Trey Young edition. I'm going to name you a couple players. You t- Hold on. <laughs> you, you threw me off of that. I got a would you rather for you. This is the Trey Young edition. I'm going to name you a couple players. You tell me would you rather them or Trey Young. Kyrie Irving. Kyrie Irving, obviously. Jalen Brunson. Trey Young. Darius Garland. Uh, Darius Garland. De'Aaron Fox. De'Aaron Fox. Jamal Murray. Uh, Trey Young. James Harden. Trey Young. Drew Holiday. Drew Holiday. Zach Levine. Trey Young. I think I think that's it. it, it, that's it. it. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I, okay. Yeah. I got oh, I got some issues with Trey Young because of his personality and his team chemistry issues. Boy, but you look he's not here, boy. You look lucky a lot not here, boy. But he got <laughs> he, he's still a good enough player that I gotta take him over some other people. So but yeah. I, I I I fully think that Trey Young is embracing like the I am the villain thing that I wouldn't take him over over some players just based on his personality alone. But okay. But right, yeah, you heading out right now? Yeah, I'm. I'm gonna go work on my my other videos that I got. So um, just uh, reach out to me on Instagram of how I can, how I can get the the vod from you and stuff like that. All right, man. So, All right, man. But yeah, uh, those of y'all that are watching, check me out on Nathan Butnet. I got my own podcast, all my own videos, stuff like that. So um. Yeah, I appreciate you having me on here, guys. Uh, we we've been trying to record together for for forever, but I'm always working whenever y'all record. So y- y'all message me out of the blue like, "Hey, you you ready to record?" And I'm I'm just chilling. So I was like, "Yeah, sure, well, let's finally hop on and stuff with like no preparation or anything." But <laughs> hopefully, hopefully I did good. Hopefully I didn't have no. You did great. You did hot Don't take. worry, don't bro, uh, don't worry. Hey, you are welcome you to join back anytime, anytime, man. Yeah, yeah for nice. sure. Anytime. Yeah, All right, we later, appreciate boys. you, man. Later. This, this is is not okay. This needs to stop now.